Hello and welcome to this first episode in the series about building a training bot in Python. In this episode, I'll be covering how a training bot works and how the algorithm works. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. So as you can see, this is the first video of a series in which I'll be covering my progress creating a training bot in Python. I hope to post once a week so you can check out more episodes on the channel. And if you're up to date, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when the next one is up. Right, let's get into it. To start off, we have the two main components, the bot and the market. Now let's look at their inputs and outputs and how they communicate. So to start off with, the market has stocks and securities traded on it, and each one will have lots of data about it. This could be price data, fundamental data, or estimate data. Now for our bot to be able to know what to trade, it needs data, which it gets from the markets. The bot then processes the data and produces buy and sell orders to send to the market. In our case, this will be via a broker. And this broker will interact with the markets for us. Let's focus on this first part of the process, the data collection. There are thousands of listed stocks with thousands of data points each, and therefore it would be impractical to collect this data ourselves, especially historical data. This means that we use a data vendor to provide us with historical and real-time data that we know is reliable and accurate and up-to-date. So when we receive this data, we do a few things with it. First, we clean the data to remove any irrelevant or missing data. In a future episode, I will discuss more of the finer points regarding missing data, so make sure you look out for that, but we will just keep it simple for the moment. Cleaning the data will make sure the algorithm will not produce skewed results, and we also help it process the data faster, as the data set is now smaller and only includes stocks in our universe. And by that, I mean our target universe, such as the S&P 500 or FTSE 350. Now we move on to calculations with the data. This will add any advanced metrics that our algorithm requires that may be composed of the underlying data. This could be metrics like exponential moving averages, volatility, or some other metrics scaled to something like market cap. This now gives us a data set that the algorithm will process. So now we have our clean data set with all the necessary data points and information that our algorithm requires to find out what to trade. The algorithm is then going to give a score to each stock in our universe determined by our trading strategy. It can then rank these stocks on their scores to find out which ones we believe are going to generate the best and worst returns. Once it has given out these scores and ranked the stocks, it can determine the optimal portfolio to maximise the score and thus our returns. Now if we had no constraints, the algorithm is going to tell us to put all our money in one stock, say Tesla. But this isn't great, as we are now at the mercy of one company, or Elon Musk's tweets perhaps. Therefore, we employ certain trading and holding constraints to reduce risk and trading costs. I will go into this further in a future episode, so stay tuned for that. So our algorithm is now generating the optimal portfolio. Comparing this to our previous portfolio, we can work out what trades we need to execute to reach this optimal portfolio. This is all part of the optimization process, as we may be constrained with our trading and holding constraints so that we don't incur a high cost or excess risk. So our algorithm has now produced the buy and sell orders to reach our optimal portfolio. And now the bot has to communicate these orders to the broker. It does this via something called an API. So not to get too technical, but an API is a way for two programs to communicate with each other. So our bot is going to send orders to the broker via this API. The orders are then executed on the market, and we now have the portfolio we believe will generate the best returns or achieve our objective, which could be maximizing capital gain, or income. So the trading bot goes through this process whenever it wants to rebalance and trade to the optimal portfolio set out by our trading strategy. And this can be triggered in two different ways. 
Firstly, it can be triggered when the bot receives new data and therefore it can update the optimal portfolio straight away. Or secondly, it can happen at a scheduled event in time, for example, weekly or monthly. So there you go, that's how a trading bot works. And as you can see, once you break it down into its core components, it can really be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. There are obviously finer details in each section and part, but this was just a general overview on how it works. So I will be covering all these steps in this series discussing different options along the way, whether that be what strategy you employ, how you research it, what constraints you may have, and how to implement it in this automated way. So if this has captured your interest and you'd like to follow along or possibly give it a go yourself, drop a like and subscribe to see more of this in the future. And as always, you can leave a comment, tweet me on Twitter, or drop me a message on LinkedIn with any questions or suggestions you have. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the next one.